This is the quick, down to the point, no BS Kia Sedona minivan review. That's a lot of words. Let's get started. The minivan segment. This is a class of vehicle that if you talk about it to certain people, they will run away from it like it's got the plague or you, you have a ski mask on and carrying an AK-47. There's just this stigma about it. And that's partially because a certain brand that also started the minivan also wrecked it for so many people from just shoddy build quality to horrible design, just, just lack of attention to detail. Yeah, it had the reliability, but man, were they just horrendous to drive overall. Today's market, they're nothing like they used to be. In the case of the Sedona, this thing is pretty amazing to drive. It's one of those vehicles that if you actually sit back and realize what you need to do, like if you have a, an army of kids, you have a ton of crap that you need to haul, an SUV makes absolutely no practical sense here. This does. And we're gonna get into why. And when you start to look at some of the things like the power lift gates, the power doors, the way that the seats and the interior configures itself, it's a no brainer if you really need to use a vehicle and you can get over the stigma. Now the front end has this very SUV look to it. it it's very similar to the Kia Serrano. And that's actually a good thing here if somebody wants a more aggressive style. The big thing here is Kia's gotten really good on their new modern cars, like the new Optima, the Cadenza, and the K900 of exuding a lot of class and luxury for the price point. You get a lot here. And this van carries over a lot of the good things about those cars. It does look more upscale. If you're looking for me to tell you what minivan to buy, well, that's not this video because there's so much competition here and it really depends on your usage case. You're gonna to have to go and really test these things out yourself. But what I'm gonna do is try to go through each little feature that I think is noteworthy in terms of just interior, exterior, and drivability that's gonna help you kind of narrow down your search a little bit. The interior of the Sedona. If you're somebody that is looking for a vehicle like this, there's gonna be a different, whole different sets of criteria that you're gonna be looking at. Mostly it's storage, it's comfort, it's capacity, usability, and most importantly, ergonomics to get in and get out of it and put kids in, put groceries, put whatever you're gonna load this thing up with. So let's take a look. Now the driver's seat specifically, uh, it is super comfortable. It has a wide range of adjustability from height wise, you can be really short and be comfortable in here, you can be really tall. There's just the level of adjustability in the seat's really good and again, you can ride in this for hours without having any fatigue. The steering wheel is a little bit bigger than what you find in normal Kias. It you know, ditches the flat bottom steering wheel. It's st still the same usability that you find in their cars with just a little less sport. And if you go with the SXL, you get this you know, fluff that is just kind of ridiculous, this plastic top. Uh, it has a steering wheel heater, seat coolers, seat heaters, and all of that works remarkably well. Next is ergonomics, like the controls, how easy it is to just operate everything here. Uh, your steering wheel controls have a really good feel. They're all easy to use. The main thing here is this center stack layout where all these buttons and knobs are. It is so well done in terms of just overall design. And I just got out of the Kia Sportage and I was so disappointed with the way that they laid out the center stack. This fixes all of that. It's, you know, it's not jam packed in a small space. It's all legible. Your tuning, your HVAC knobs, all of that is all rotary. So you can just feel for it. You know exactly where it's at. You don't have to fumble around, look at the touch screen. It's right there. And when you're you know, being screamed at in the back seat or you're just constantly on the go, you don't wanna think about crap like this. It just works. Now the big one, the back seat, the back, the whole back cargo area. Uh, and whether you're just transporting crumb crushers or a whole bus full of geriatric nursing home patients that are totally disgruntled about getting to bingo late, they are gonna fit back here and there's so much versatility in terms of moving these seats forward. They actually recline. Uh, you can kick up the, the seat recliner, which is cool but gimmicky at the same time because the front seats have to be moved pretty far forward to make use of it. But the overall adjustability of these seats, left and right, back and forward, I could, this, this friggin' van turns into a jungle gym. I can run through here, I can do aerobics. Uh, there's just a shitload of space. That's the easiest way I can sum it up. The next thing is 
you have a little screen back here if you opt for the up, uh, upper models, which flips up. It's pretty heavy duty, so you know you can have a temper tantrum and just kick the shit out of it, and it's gonna probably survive that mostly. But you flip up the screen, you can do DVDs, USB, whatever you whatever you do. And there's a cup holders back here in storage. Really, storage and usability and ingress and egress, getting in and out of this van, is where this kills SUVs and CUVs. Those look like junk compared to this. Now you do have HVAC controls back here on the top right side of the van, it's not on the left. There are also vents in the roof. Really, this is a great place. You can also control it in the front. You know, climate control is not an issue, that's the point. Uh, when you get in the back, you have, you know, fold down seats that can just kind of fold into the floor. Uh, they can recline in the back. That third row is pretty usable. Again, when you get to this class of vehicle, you have power everything. You have a power lift gate, which will also open when you get close to it uh, without having to touch anything within three seconds. Both side doors are sliding and they're also powered and you can re operate them via remote control, open and close. Now this makes a lot of sense if you have kids, you need to have the doors open, you need to, to get in and out of here without fumbling around, without pulling on doors, without worrying about the, how far they're gonna swing open and just fighting with it. You don't wanna be fighting with your van or your car or SUV. You don't have to fight with this. Uh, it's very easy to operate. The next thing is the actual seats, how they fold down. I think the operation and the mechanisms are pretty good overall. They're pretty simple. It takes a couple times to master it, and there is some upper body strength required to do it. And I noticed that pushing them down and pulling them up was it required a surprising amount of effort, at least for me. Now, this is something, if you're looking at this, you're going to want to test it for yourself. N no demo is going to really truly show you how good it is or bad it is because everybody's a little bit different. But I actually like the setup. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, the cargo capacity with the seats down is enormous, as you know, as you would expect. I would almost always leave the third row down uh, because it just creates so much space. But if you really have the extra kids, the extra, you know, the people you're putting in here, you're going to need to have this third row up, or at least, you know, one side. Uh, which really, this whole seat goes up with you know, two pulls, one pull on a physical plastic handle and one pull on this tether. Uh, and then again, it reclines. But for the most part, usability is great. You have a uh, LED light in the back, which is actually a nice feature because it turns into a portable flashlight that you can remove and, you know, use for whatever the hell you're going to use it for. But I know Scott really loved that feature, of course, because it's LED. You have two power outlets, a standard, you know, home style power outlet, three prong, and then you have a 12 volt adapter, which, you know, would be for your portable chargers. Tire jack, a subwoofer, a ton of speakers, and then that's about it back here. Now, one of the biggest things that is going to be used in here is infotainment because you're going to be spending a lot of time commuting in here so something like the sound system is pretty pretty critical i would say if you have the ability to opt for the full-blown infinity setup with the subwoofer with all the bells and whistles here i would opt for it because the sound system is really incredible in here there's a ton of speakers it's really well isolated uh the bass doesn't escape it doesn't rattle it just sounds really incredible actually one of the better sounding vehicles i've been in recently uh, this is also your standard Hyundai and Kia interface. Now, one thing that's weird is I can't get Android Auto working on here, you know, where you tether your phone, your, you know, the head unit through USB and get that to come up. I don't know if they've just left it out of here, but it's in some Hyundais and some Kias, but not in others. So I really don't get it, but that's not here, at least in my tester. The overall user interface, uh, it's pretty intuitive. The screen quality is good, and this model actually allows you to adjust saturation levels, contrast levels to kind of tweak the display as you would like. Display quality here is one of the best out of most of the brands. Hyundai and Kia have much better displays in their new cars, very easy to read, graphically good, but the trade-off is it's a little slow, the interface. You know, touch, touch scrolling is, you know, pretty cheesily slow compared to your smartphone. You know, scrolling up and down is slow. Getting through menus is slower. Um, little details like, you know, if you want to turn off the display, there's not one button here to turn off the display and then when you turn off the display it turns back on when you're adjusting the volume which is kind of annoying but overall the usability the sound system spe specifically the sound makes up for a lot of the shortcomings here with speed and just you know touch interface problems the second display is your main one between your two gauges here this gives you like all of your maintenance all your your compass a lot of little details in terms of setting your safety features um, 
your rear lift gate, your way your door locks operate it, one button push or two button pushes to open up all the locks. All that information is here, including miles per gallon, and it's all operated through these really intuitive controls on the steering wheel. So this is actually one of the better systems I've seen in terms of controlling all of that. It kind of removes it from the infotainment, which is good considering kind of how clumsy this is in some cases, but uh, you're not gonna have too much problem using this and you're probably just gonna keep it on miles per gallon. Now it's time for a ride in the Kia Sedona. The first thing to note about the handling and stability and just the overall ride quality of the Sedona is it's really well dampened. I'm, I take vehicles back here where it's extremely choppy. Uh, the pavement is just, it's just shit, honestly. And cars have a really, and SUVs and trucks have a hard time dampening the bumps. The Sedona does a really good job at isolating these type of bumps. So if you get on really bad roads, you're, you're gonna feel it, but it's not a horrible experience. It's a smooth ride. The next thing is steering feel. Now this feels like it has a pretty quick steering rack, which means it's quick to turn over the wheel, uh, but the actual steering response is a little slow and vague. Uh, you feel like you have to do a lot of turning of the wheel to get it to respond. Uh, it doesn't have this instantaneous feel, and that's because this is a big vehicle. Uh, the body control is you know, not the greatest, but it's exactly what you would expect for a vehicle of this segment. Uh, it, it does have body roll and that's just part of the size. But the good thing is, is it does have grip. Uh, it's not like the thing's plowing. You never get this sense that it's going to roll over or it's gonna get out of control. In fact, when you really start to push it, uh, which most people aren't gonna be doing in a vehicle like this, you start to get a little bit of understeer, but it, it really starts to stick. It starts to control itself really well and you can drive this more like a car. It, it doesn't have that minivan feel. So your turning circle and turning radius is actually pretty good for uh, you know, doing three point turns. You have this 360 camera system in here that kind of tells you every single side of the vehicle so you can monitor uh, what's in front of you, behind you on the sides. And that makes it really easy to park and to get around and just kind of see where you're going. Now, Turbowski actually spent more time in the Sedona than I did, and the, one of the first things he said is, now I understand why so many vehicles have a black upper dashboard. In the Sedona, you have this light, tan, taupe, khaki, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, light dash. And the problem with that is it's reflective. And, you know, in the sunlight, all you can see at the bottom of the window is the whole dashboard venting. It's just a huge reflection on the glass. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, I prefer a black interior, at least a black upper dash as well. It makes a lot more sense. So if you're sensitive to that, check it out on your test drive and see if it bothers you. So if you're looking at the Sedona, it's super comfortable. Now, while I'd prefer to be in the back seats and relax, if you have to drive this it, it is like driving a car, just a bigger version of it. Your seating position's good. You're always gonna be comfortable. It's got a lot of adjustability. Uh, the acceleration's good, the braking, the overall steering is, uh, the steering feels not good, but uh, you know, it makes up for it in different ways. The next and most important thing is it's safe. It's got a ton of safety features that you're gonna want that are gonna cover your ass. It's got lane departure warning, radar cruise control, uh, blind spot monitoring, you know, it, as many airbags you could, as you could possibly imagine. I said at the beginning of this video that minivans have a stigma, you know, from previous models to certain drivers of them. You, you just can't get away from that. Now, if you could just turn that off for a second, you get behind the wheel of this, it doesn't drive as bad as people think. It doesn't drive like the minivans of the past. In fact, it drives better than most SUVs and crossovers I've been in. So what does that mean? It means that, you know, people are very trendy. They're very, they have an idea in their head of what something is or what it is because, not because of the reality of it, just because of the perception. 
So if you can give this thing a chance, if you can give a minivan a chance, it's gonna offer you so much more than a lot of these crossovers and SUVs can and will give you, just in terms of room, comfort, accessibility, and the list can go on. Definitely check out the Sedona uh, in terms of a driving experience and just let me know if I'm wrong here.